Welcome back to Drinking It In. I'm your host, Chris Cassara, and we are here to help you know more and drink better, and I refuse to be clamped down by these COVID travel restrictions, and I am going to France. I'm going, I'm gone. I'm already there. Drinking a wine from the Loire Valley, we're gonna explore the Cabernet Franc grape today. So Cabernet Franc is a red wine, okay? It's a grape that makes red wines, and, um, it's kind of the parent of a few grapes that you may have heard of, like Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, Merlot. That's kind of neat, but you didn't know that. So Cabernet Franc, we, we tasted a little bit uh, of, I've tasted a little bit of this uh, grape on the channel. Um, I'll put in a, uh, a link to the conversation I did with my friend Eric Hiltz at Bin 412, where we tasted a phenomenal uh, Finger Lakes Cabernet Franc. But you know, the, the heart, I guess, of where Cabernet Franc is, uh, it, you know, is really do, done so well is France. Um, mainly the Loire Valley. There's a lot of spots in the U.S. that do it well, whether that's some of the Sierra foothills in California, uh, the state of Washington, or the Finger Lakes in New York. Um, South Africa does really nice uh, Cabernet Francs. And also, what you might not think about is, uh, you know, Italy grows a fair amount of Cabernet Franc. Last thing to, uh, to bore you with as far as geographies are concerned is that Cabernet Franc is, uh, is used as a blending grape in Bordeaux, mostly um, to, uh, I guess mostly in blends that are with Merlot. Uh, so it's things in the right bank. So when you see the label of Pomerol, chances are there's some Cabernet Franc in it. So a lot of places where it can be. And um, it's, I think it can be a polarizing grape because you can get notes of green pepper when you smell a Cabernet Franc. And that will turn people, that will turn some people off. And you know, if you're a veggie head um, and you're okay with green peppers, you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy it that much more. This one has a little bit of it, but um, this much more fruity. Um, so in addition to that bell pepper note that can come through, the Cabernet Franc is gonna be more on the red side of the fruit spectrum. So think strawberries, Think uh, raspberries and cherries, um, and the cherries can vary from bright to uh, to dark. The Cabernet Franc can be earthy. They could have a little bit of a spicy chili pepper note too. I don't know, maybe think of a jalapeno. So very cool. Uh, lots of variation, right down the middle from a weight perspective. Medium weight, you know, not not light, not heavy, not medium heavy, not light to medium, medium. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of easy to like. I'm having trouble that, you know, like just avoiding, just spending 10 minutes smelling this wine because this is pretty. So let's get, let's get into this. This is from the Samour Champagne region of France. And this is Le Petit Saint Vincent from 2017. So the, some more Champagne region within Loire Valley usually yields um, wines that are a little lighter and more perfumey than some of the bigger regions in Cabernet Franc that you're probably, you may be familiar with of Chinon and Bour Bourgogne. Um, it's spelled nothing like you just heard me pronounce it. Of course, I don't even know if I really got the pronunciation right, so you're on your, you're on your own with that. Um, in the end, these wines are gonna have medium to high acid Right, so that's gonna be great for barbecue. It's gonna be great for vinegar and tomato-based sauces, um, sausage, anything like really that's like stu got lentils in it. There you go, those are your food pairings with this. This wine is kind of intoxicating. So there's a strawberry note, there's a little bit of green bell pepper in there. There's almost a, um, there's a little bit of a barnyard element, not Uncle Roy's barn, I didn't just walk in Uncle Roy's barn, but maybe I'm down the block. Maybe I'm down the block from Uncle Roy's barn, or in his case, I'm down the sh down the road because he doesn't have a block. It's you know it's a farm, middle of you know the Catskills. I'm excited to taste this though. Hmm. Wow, so, damn, I only bought one bottle of this. I'm regretting that decision right now. So, 
very much candy cherries, dark, dark candy cherries. Um, really light on the palate. I, think, I find the Cabernet Franc wines don't really stay with you forever in terms of like the finish. Like some wines you have a finish that goes on for like a minute, minute and a half. This one is relatively short, but it's, it's a pretty intense, beautiful, um, you know, burst of energy when you drink this. Yeah, so the dark cherries, a little earthy dirtiness, and um, almost a whiff of herbs, a whiff. Kind of like a bouquet garni. There might be some rosemary, sage, thyme, just kind of wrapped up together. Really delicious. Well, so don't limit yourself to, ca to Cabernet Sauvignon. Don't limit yourself to Merlot, the, ch the children of this Cabernet Franc. Great. Um, and definitely explore Cabernet Franc across the world. Um, I'll put in some uh, useful links in the show notes for you so that you, uh, you have more of a guidebook for, uh, for Cabernet Franc. And I think, you know, one of your resolutions for this year should be drink more Cabernet Franc. Um, thanks for watching. You know, I hope everyone, um, you know, likes these videos, you know, definitely subscribe because I know a lot of you out there who are watching this video aren't subscribed and it would mean a lot to me if you were. And, um, you know, it, uh, you know, I really, uh, enjoy bringing these to you and hope, um, uh, we end up sharing a lot of wine and drinks in 2021. Have a good one. Cheers. And I'll see you next time.